how she died and a lot of people died. I'm glad Ed died, but some of the group, some people died because of the car coming to the uh coming to the account. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top ten dumbest mistakes on The Walking Dead. But then we didn't do anything stupid like shooting. For this list, we'll be looking at those unfortunate moments when characters in The Walking Dead, yeah, uh, trusting her so many times, didn't seem to have enough brains to fill a zombie's belly. We're not counting the spinoffs today because they could each have lists of their own. And beware of major. I don't. I don't rewatch Fear of the Walking Dead. It's just not Fear of Walking Dead. wasn't wasn't for me. It really wasn't. Spoilers ahead. What was the most idiotic choice a characters made on this show? Let us know in the comments below. But please don't go. Oh, Daryl. Daryl's fucking mistake. Got Glenn killed. All Negan on us about it. Number ten. Carl messes with a muddy walker. Yeah. This was uh th- yeah this was a, re- a really dumb dumb mistake for Carl. To- Carl, I think Carl in this list like two or three times because Carl made some bad mistakes. He made a mistake, got he got himself killed. Then he almost got himself killed. The first time he almost got himself killed by this walker and got uh and got the old dude killed. While Carl Grimes eventually becomes a professional walker slayer, he starts out as a disobedient little kid. Yeah, because that's that was his character was. He was so disobedient for some fucking reason. That's his character is most. That was most of his character is. He's a disobedient who mistakes stupidity for bravery. Yeah. Back in the season two days at Herschel's farm, Carl comes across a walker that's trapped in mud. Is it? It's a fine line between bravery and stupidity, and that's what Carl was. He was so stupid. His bright idea is to shakily aim a pistol towards the creature at point blank range and without provocation. Unsurprisingly, it lunges forward and nearly turns the boy into zombie food. Besides needlessly endangering himself, Carl inadvertently leads the monster back to the farm, yeah. where it sinks its teeth into Dale. Yeah, he got he got Dale killed. The group was soon forced to put down one of their most fiercely loyal friends. Yeah, none of this would have happened if Carl didn't look a trapped walker in the mouth. Yeah, we'll go inside now, please. Number nine, Lori crashes and burns. You want those two idiots having us ride? I'm done looking for people. Uh Her entire outing makes everything worse. You know about this? No. Look, just, just should take a gun. I don't know. I wouldn't let her go out there alone. Lori's actions caused some members to argue and require. Yeah, because uh, Shane, because Shane was like, did <clears throat> did Herschel knew? No, not Herschel. Uh, Dar, Dar, uh, I've, I've got it's two old dudes, okay? And it, you got Daryl, uh, you got Daryl known. It's like okay. Okay, so he no one didn't know did not know what Lori was because Lori didn't tell nobody. And one got into an argument, even though it was Lori's fault because she made some dumbass mistakes. Shame to risk his life to find her. Yeah, if she had literally just sat and waited. Rick would have returned without incident, and the heroes wouldn't have lost yet another car. I forgot what Rick was. I think Rick was with her showing on. In that in that uh, bar. Number eight. Eugene exposes Alexandria. Situation like that, you're supposed to save him, protect the governor's son. You'd have been a hero. Uh, okay, so I think this is when Eugene <clears throat> told the told uh told Negan them that where Alexandria was. That's how Negan knew about everything. Could ask for anything. My apologies. Once upon a time, Eugene was seen as a brilliant scientist who might hold the cure to stopping walkers for good. But it was eventually revealed that he was bluffing the entire time to convince people to protect him. Mm -hmm. That poker face would have definitely been useful when he came face to face with Governor Milton's spoiled son, Sebastian. 
After Eugene foolishly loses his cool and hits the privileged boy, the not-scientist ends up in jail. He's told the only way for him and his friends to stay safe in the governor's community is to reveal Alexandria's whereabouts. If I were to disclose those coordinates, what? Okay, so this is a different. Okay, this is different. So I don't, I don't really, I don't really remember this part. I don't, remember, I thought it was Negan, but it's somewhere else. Guarantee, could you provide for my community safety? Look around, think how we've treated you. All the chances you've got. The court of Eugene quickly spills the beans and exposes his home's location. Wait, 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 wait. We're all friends. We're all friends. They're here to help. Thanks to Eugene's lack of restraint, Alexandria gained more enemies they had to deal with. Number seven, Henry follows Whisperer's solo. That's and this is how Henry died. They didn't send me. Came for her. It was practically a given that Henry would do something dumb if he was featured in an episode. Ultimately, it was Henry's lack of. Yeah, because Henry, because Henry liked this girl who's a part of the Whisperers and got him so killed. Self control around his love interest Lydia that proved that he wasn't the most forward thinking survivor. He initially tries to help her. I don't know who is dumber, Carl or him. Cause a different, I think the different. Well, they both got themselves killed for dumb, dumbass reasons. Void being sent back to her mother during a tense hostage trade. She'll kill them if we don't get her back. No, there's got to be another way. There isn't. Yeah. I'm sorry. When that very flawed plan fails, Henry decides to follow the entire group of Whisperers solo. He is unsurprisingly captured quickly and nearly slain by his very own love interest. Although Fucking Henry it. manages to slither his way out of that situation, his actions put a huge target on his back. Yeah. It was little surprise that the Whisperers chose him as one of their victims later on. This is stupid. <clears throat> Who's coming with us? Number six. Rick gets betrayed by the scavengers again. Yeah, he. Yeah, I was like, yeah, trusting Judas again. Yeah, that was fucking stupid, Rick. Guns. A lot. A lot. And then we fight your fight. Clearly, Rick Grimes never heard the second part of the Fool Me Once idiot. Yeah. In season seven, he finds himself cornered by the scavengers. However, Rick still pushes to make an alliance with their trashy group leader, Jadis, to fight Negan. But the scavengers turn on the heroes and nearly cause them to lose the war before it begins. Yeah. We had a deal. Tamiel came for the bottle things, followed on Sidok. Had a better deal. Because this is when they really uh, started the war. Despite that fact, Rick got to the garbage people again and asked them to help bring down Negan's army. The scavengers end up nearly executing him before he ekes out another deal. Come with me there. Oh, uh, why is Rick trusting her? And she already betrayed him once, like like an idiot. We'll wait till the others meet us when they do. We'll ask the lieutenants to surrender all of us. When Rick marches on Negan's base with his new allies, the trash army almost immediately abandons him when the going gets tough. Rick's decision-making skills were just rubbish when it came to the scavengers. Number five, keeping a barn full of zombies. Yes, this was one of the dumbest decisions ever. I get it that the I get it the barn was uh, secure, but what well, about one day it was just way too many zombies? Nobody said what. What about it becomes a point where it's way too many zombies and they can break out the uh. Break out of there. What Herschel gonna do now? Herschel can't do nothing. He gonna get one kill in his family. When Glenn tries to get some private time with Maggie in a barn, he discovers that her family keeps a collection. Uh, and why? Oh, well, well, Glenn, he was trying to smash, um, smash Maggie, but he thought, oh, she was, she's in the barn somewhere. Then he found out that, oh shit. 
it's a whole group of zombies in here. Then Maggie told told uh Glenn not to uh, tell nobody. It, it took Glenn so long to tell them to tell them about this. And I had to say, this is the episode where they found out that the girl, uh Carl's daughter, was in the barn. Of walkers in that building. <laughs> It turns out that the Greens hold out hope that the undead may one day be restored to their human state. Despite their sympathetic motivations, the decision to keep so many walkers is absurdly dumb. There are people out there who haven't been in their right minds. I'm coming back. I had to uh, do something right quick.
I'm back. I had to uh, help somebody right quick. Restored. They're essentially keeping like a powder minutes. keg only a stone's throw away from where actual living people sleep. To add insult to injury, it's revealed that the missing Sophia yeah. was in that barn the entire, entire time, time. For trapping themselves in a cave. I don't remember this part. Hey, right. Joe, let's go. Come on, I'll meet you. Well, we all stay together. Some people never learn to oh, find their surroundings. The while a small group of heroes is searching for the Whisperer's horde of walkers, Carol recklessly runs after her nemesis, Alpha. The chase soon leads into an unknown cave. Instead of waiting to see what happens, Daryl insists that every one of her allies rushes in after her. Why? Wow. Like cattle herded into a pen, all our heroes end up trapped underground with seemingly no way out. Really? While Carol barreling into a foreign confined space, would have been bad enough. Seeing everyone else fall in line like lemmings was excruciating. <laughs> fall in line like lemmings. Your desperate escape eventually led to Connie being separated from the group for a long time. When Carol insisted their misfortunes should be blamed on her, we immediately agreed. Yeah, because it was uh, it was her fault. She didn't want to let them almost get killed, so it's her fault. You cared about her, and now she's gone because of me. Please. It. Number three, Beth attempts to kill Dawn. Yes, this was really stupid. Everyone knows this was really stupid. So you said, Rick and them finally came and rescue you, and you get yourself killed by, shot, by trying to kill Dawn. And you use a scissors, so at least stab her in the fucking head. Why are you stabbing her in the fucking side of her fucking arm? Beth, in this job, you don't need their love. But you have to have their respect. The road to saving Beth from the clutches of Dawn and the Grady Memorial Hospital was a long and tumultuous one. However, it looked like the journey would have a happy ending when her friends agreed to hand over prisoners to secure her safety. But everything goes sideways when Dawn insists that Rick hand over the innocent Noah. No, I just need Noah. Why? And then you can leave. Although the boy selflessly agrees, Beth won't have it. She tries to lash out at Dawn. I'm like, you might as well just keep. I'm like, I say, you might as well just keep Noah there. Okay, he's just, he's gonna die a couple more episodes later. So why y'all try to get kill Beth off? The pair of scissors. However, this action results in Beth getting shot and dying in an instant. Yeah. If the heroine had just had better aim. She would have escaped. Yeah, she should have had a lot better aim. Aim the fucking head. Why you aimed her in the shoulder? Beth's failed attack stung more when Noah. Died. Yeah, it, it stung a lot more. Yeah, so I'm like, you might as well just keep Noah there because he's gonna die a couple more episodes later. That that's why it got a lot worse because he died. He died sooner. He died later in the season. At His least he lived for like another two seasons. A, a season, another two. Yeah, I would, we would be, we were, we were all been fine. And you actually kept Noah alive for like a season or two. But no, you killed him off like five or six episodes later. Heartbreaking death feel completely pointless. It's over. It was just about her. Number two, Daryl attacks Negan. Yes, because he got Glenn killed. Dwight. Load him up. Was it the man with the club who killed Glenn, or was it the actions of others? The Cause Glenn, cause he always just killed. Uh, I, I forgot who. I, I know his name. I can't pronounce his name. I, I'm bad with names, but I forgot. Uh, I just I was almost remembering it, but he killed uh, that dude. that hair comes Daryl Preston in the face and got Glenn. Get, Got fucking Glenn killed. Long awaited appearance. Okay, this is why a lot of people hated Daryl for like like a season or two because of this action. And came with the finale cliffhanger that let us know one of the heroes was a goner. After a long wait, it was revealed that Abraham took the brunt of Lucy. Yeah, Abraham Abraham died. Then after Abraham, because thanks to Daryl got Glenn killed. But it didn't stop there. Negan made it very clear that defiance would not be tolerated. But in the wake of the survivor's death, Daryl loses his cool and punches the big bad. That? 
Oh, my. That is a no-no. And with an ominous, back to it, Egan Slade Glenn. The crossbow survivor knew he was outmatched and outgunned, but Daryl still went in for a futile punch that came at the expense of a friend's life. Mm -hmm. It wasn't your fault. It was his fault, let's be honest. Uh, I, I'm sorry, Maggie. That gave you a shot out to make uh, Daryl not feel bad, but it's his fault. He got going killed. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few dishonorable, or should we yeah, say... Yeah, this was stupid. Uh, James, uh, Andrea is shooting Daryl. Almost killed Daryl. This memorable mention. Andrea shoots Daryl. Yeah, Andrea sh shot Daryl. Why did she have to take the safety off when aiming at a friend? Yeah. This is when she took the safety off. This is when she did that on Daryl. No. It, it was on accident because it was like she didn't even know. She didn't even know because she thought it was a walker. So I don't really blame her. But it was still a dumb decision because she almost got him killed. Gabriel saves Gregory. Paying it forward doesn't always pay off. Because I think after this, I, he went blind, I think. I forgot. Wait, kill Thanks, uh, Greg. He still supplies and breaks off from the main subway crew. Yeah, and he got so killed. What horrible train of thought made him think that this was a good idea? Look, I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. I can't think I'm sorry, but... I want another chance. Okay, I'll do it again. I'll do it again. I'll do better, please. I, I love how they just kept him, kept him, kept him. I love how they just killed him off like that. It's like open the thing. It's like no, you you are dying. We continue. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings. I think the worst decision is uh, Carl getting killed. And switch on notifications. It has to be no one because it was in the thumbnail. Yo. Number one, Carl gets a fatal bite. Yeah, this was really stupid. You know, like like the tent part, like we already talked about Carl's bad decisions. Now, when he was a kid, he made this dumbass decision. Now we in like years later in a in a the dumbest decision ever in the show. This is when he gets so killed. My mom told me that you got to do what's right. I sort of know what that is sometimes, but sometimes it's not. We had to begin and end with Your Carl. mother was a prick, Carl. I'm sorry. Carl, since his final mistake completely changed the trajectory of the show. While heading back to Alexandria, Carl comes across a stranger named Sadiq. You might as well make Carl. This is why this was a bad decision on Carl and the show. And say, if you want to kill Carl, I'll at least make him be like a badass. But you didn't. You made him look like a fucking moron and he made the same decision like he was when he was a kid. Free the new character is slaying walkers to honor the mother that he'd lost. Carl can't seem to resist unwarranted undead mayhem, so he and Sadiq go out of their way to attack a handful of them. Sadiq even utters the words, you don't have to do this. During this unnecessary encounter, Carl gets the bite that eventually leads to his demise. This turn so was fucking especially stupid. baffling, since the kid survives to the end in the source material. But adaptation or not, seeing Carl perish after making an easily avoidable mistake was painful. Yeah, because like, I get the, I get you want to change some of the stuff from the comics, but it's some things in the comics. That you should not be changing the same thing with marvel as well there are some things that is things that i don't fix i forgot the same don't change things that already don't have to be fixed it's some things that should be fixed but some things that should just stay where it is that's why a lot of people kind of have a problem with walking dead and a little bit of marvel nowadays it's that you try to change things that's not even broken for some reason. You want to change some of the stuff that was how, like, let's say, like, read back comics. You want to change the things what 
that wants to read bad comics, change it and make it better. Or some of the things that were decent just make it a lot better. But you just changing characters and changing shit for no reason at all. It's just to make it make it make it he's just making it be worse than it already is. That's all it is. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips. I, I agree with this because, like, oh my god, so many bad decisions. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with this list because it, it was some really bad decision making in this show. Don't fix things out, all not even broken. That's all I have to say. But I hope y'all enjoy this video. Enjoy both of these videos. Just go and watch Watch Mojo again. Try to make a lot of top ten, top ten videos. 